Hello and welcome to Red Tree Church's online service. We just wanted to say thank you so much for listening in today. And no matter where you are tuning in from, we love to stay connected with our online community, whether that's through our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, our Church Center app, or of course our podcast. And whether this is your first time listening or your hundredth time listening, we hope that you are encouraged and inspired by today's message. So let's take a listen. Uh, we are glad that you chose to be here this morning. Uh, we're doing a series called Not Today, Satan. Uh, if you were here last week and you found yourself this week saying, Not Today, Satan, would you just raise your hand up real high? Yeah, 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 there's a lot of us. That's good. That's good. I mean, there's a little bit of application in that teaching. And so that's what I want, to, I want us to happen every Sunday. Not Today, Satan. And so what, what I learned, though, is when you begin to, like, proclaim victory, like, over your life and, like, God's doing this and God's leading you, uh, Satan's like, okay, we're going to turn the heat up a little bit more. And so uh, that's, that's, that's a rough spot to be, but it's a great opportunity to show the love and the, the forgiveness and the leadership of Jesus in your life through the way that you respond. Uh, this morning I'm, I'm going to speak a message and it's called Renew My Mind. Um, and, and I want to give a shout out to a guy who wrote this book. It's called Winning the War in Your Mind. Uh, so if, if you're a note taker or if you're here this morning and you, you feel that you do have a struggle with anxiety or you do have a struggle uh, maybe with some depression or maybe some, some things going on in your life and you just really need to know how to wade through these situations, the name of the book you've got to get is Winning the War in Your Mind by Craig Rochelle. Uh, a lot of the, the message today is gleaned from that book. And so I want to make sure that everyone understands that. I'm not trying to copyright or steal someone else's material. Um, but he's a great author, a great man of God, a great leader. And I would encourage you to purchase some of his books if you get a chance. Uh, but today we're, we're going to pick up again with our key verse. Anybody remember where our key verse uh, came from? It's first Peter. Jessica, you get it right again. All right. She gets a gold star. Uh, first Peter chapter 5 verse 7 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, cast all your, all right, some of you are new to Red Tree, and so if you ever see me do this, that's a pretty good cue, anxiety, I mean, you don't say anxiety every time, but the next word would be what's to come out of your mouth, right, so cast all your, anxiety. some of you are like, you're giving me anxiety right now, man, oh, this is terrible, this is the worst Richard Simmons workout I've ever seen in my life, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares. Okay, we got a couple excited over here. Not a lot of happening over here. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Maybe for some of you, like, that's it. Like, that's the thing you need to know. That's the thing you need to hear. Because you've heard how bad you are. You've heard how messed up you are. You've heard how you're never going to move beyond where you are. And the things you've done, you deserve to happen to you. And you've really kind of disqualified yourself from faith. Or maybe you tried faith at one point, but then all of a sudden you learned, I can't measure up to their standards. Like the church I'm going to, I just can't, like as soon as I feel like I'm getting there, they raise the bar higher and I can never jump over the bar. I can't even like touch the bar. I'm like Chad trying to hit the bottom of the net on a rim. Like I just can't reach it, right? Like everything I do that is anything tied to church or faith, I fail at it. So I'm just done. And so I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but some of you are there. Like you're at that spot or you've been at that spot and really you've never moved past that space. And so it causes anxiety when you see something that looks anything like faith. It causes anxiety when you hear a song. Or maybe you, you become envious of those who you do see strong faith, right? That's what is a beautiful thing. To see people's faith and work. Uh, the, the whole book of James in the New Testament speaks about that. It is a faith that works. It's a faith that's not just your own, but it is a faith that will provide you direction. It is a faith that will lead you boldly. And it is a faith that people will see working through you, and then you get to point people to Jesus and say, if it wasn't for him, I don't know how I would get through this moment. And that's why this verse means so much for us to be able to cast all our anxiety, to cast all of our fears, to cast all of our cares, our hurts, our worries. How many of you worry often? Any of you? Yes, we do. And if you're not worried, you're worried because you're not worrying, right? Am I right about that? Yes. And then you get anxious. You're like, oh my gosh, okay, well, I know things come in threes. And so this happened and this happened. And like, I'm not a superstitious person, but this is the th third thing's coming, right? You're like, what? Where's that at in the Bible? Things come in three, right? 
Like and Lady Luck, L- Lady Luck doesn't exist. It's Father God, right? And so for me, everything happens because that's where the direction I'm going. That's the direction God's leading me. And some things happen just because of my ignorance. Some things happen because, honestly, my sheer stupidity, not yours. This is me. Because I knew better and I still did it. That causes me anxiety. Because now I feel like I have fractured my relationship so much between me and God that I don't know if it'll ever get back. And again, don't raise your hand, but some of you are there. Your relationship with him has been so fractured for so long. And you've even had Christ followers tell you you'll never be the same. Because of what you have done, you'll never be the same. And I want you to know right now, right up front, that is a lie from Satan. That is never anything that Jesus shared. That is never anything that Jesus taught. Jesus says you can be forgiven. You can be redored, restored. You can be, uh, those are the things like, those are the things he wants to do within your life, right? He wants to see you grow. He wants to see you move by faith. He wants to see you trust him in every situation and in every circumstance, To be able to say, okay, God, I know that I need to cast my cares. I know I need to cast my fears on you, but I just don't know if I can do it. It's okay for you to talk like that to God. Did you know he's way bigger than you think he is? He can handle way more than you think he can. But you got to get to the space in your mind to where you begin to believe what you begin to read within the New Testament. And that's a, that, 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 that is a space that we begin to call spiritual maturity. You're moving beyond what you see, how you want to react, what you believe is happening, but you move by faith and you lead by faith and you go the direction that God is leading you because you've been prayerfully considering it. You've been seeking God. And you may not know what to do, but you know what God's leading you to do. And that is what you need to do. So this morning as we jump into this, I, I want to pick up a, a section that Paul was writing to the Philippians. It's going to be found in Philippians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 6. And before I get there, there's many times that Paul would write in a prison to these other churches that he went and started. There are spaces that you see Paul's words and the way that he would articulate things. And it looks like, okay, well that's no big deal. But if you know the context of the scripture, if you know where he's coming from, a lot of times he's chained up in prison. A lot of times it's because of a failed trip that he went on. And it's because he's been chased out of town by, by people beating him with sticks. Or he's been chased out of town, uh, people trying to stone him to death. And again, that's not a Colorado type stoning. That is a throw rocks at your head and kill you type stoning that he did. And he would write words like this. Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 6. Listen to what he says, because knowing the context changes everything. This is what he says. Do not be anxious about anything. (laughs) Thanks. Thanks, Paul. That's very comforting. He says this, but in every situation, even the one you find yourself in now, but in every situation, the one you haven't been able to move past, he says, don't be anxious about that. But in every situation, everything that happens in every situation by prayer, this is how we do it, and petition. So he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, thank you for the way that your spirit is alive, Lord, and it is is moving and stirring. God, thank you for being a God who is involved in our lives daily. Thank you for being someone that we can bring our fears, we can bring our hurts, we can bring all the anxiety that we may have, and we can cast that, we can relocate that to you. And Father, we can trust you with it. Not that you're going to condemn us, not that you're going to judge us or be upset with us, but that you can take it from us so that we may follow you better and trust you more every day in our lives. Lord, for those who may be here this morning that do not have a relationship with you, God, I pray that you would draw them to yourself. Lord, that you would show up and show out and God, do only what you can do. God, move me out of the way. Anoint me with your spirit and help me to preach your truth, but help me to preach your truth in love so that we may know that we were exactly where you wanted us to be. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
That, that, that verse 6, when you come to the end of verse 6, he says this. He says, do this with thanksgiving. Like, this isn't one of those statements that's like, hey, you just got to fake it until you make it type thing, right? Like, everyone thinks everything's okay, so when we get there, everyone needs to believe that everything is still okay, right? And some of you have grown up in that home, right? Some of you have almost, like, you've been slapped going on the way to church, or you've been like, if your mom could get a hold of you, she would. She had one hand on the steering wheel, and the other one, like Mike Tyson back here, just trying to catch something. Anybody? Like, did you ride a car like that at all? Yeah. Or some of you have been in the biggest dog-cat fight with your spouse on her way to church, right? And it was over. She asked you the question. She's like, which, which one of these shoes looks better? And you're like, I don't care. Wrong answer. All right? Make something up. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter what you say. She's going to pick one anyways, all right? So just say something other than being a jerk, right? And you show up and you're mad and you get to church and you're, everyone's like, Hey, man, welcome to Red Tree. We're high-fiving. We're giving you nugs. And all of a sudden, you're like, it's on. Man, we're so glad to be here. Bless God. Man, we're, just, man, we're looking forward to your message today, Pastor Chad. I heard it was going to be a good one. Man, last week was so good. I don't know how you can top this week. Whatever, right? Like, bro, are you okay? Right? I mean, that is not real at all, right? And so Paul isn't asking us to fake following Jesus like it's an enjoyment to us and, and we should be able to just act like everything's okay and you should never have a problem. That's not what he's saying. He's saying when you have those problems, when you have those fears, cast them to God. Leave them over there at the cross. And then he says, when you do this, do it with thanksgiving. Like, okay, now this one, th th it messes with you. With thanksgiving, like, uh, God, thank you so much for not letting me get the raise this year. Uh, thank you for allowing my family to fall apart. God, thank you so much for allowing me to fail that exam that I know I didn't study for, but I prayed that you would help me, um, and you didn't do it, so now I'm upset. And so, God, just thank you so much for all the bad things coming my way. And if you could, just rip my heart right out of my chest now. That'd be great. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 10-4 over and out, good buddy, right? That's how we talk to God, isn't it? Like we're on a CB or CB. Yeah, is that talk? Hey, uh, yeah, Breaker 1-9, uh, dear Lord, you there? Amen. Like, we mean, a, a, amen doesn't mean you drop the mic on him. Like, oh, I'm not talking to him no more. Yeah, you are. Like, he doesn't need you. Like, it's not an intro to Jesus to begin the conversation of dear Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to you. Now, please go ahead. No. It's every day we're in a conversation with God, and sometimes he hears you say things, and he's like, that's not what, that, my child shouldn't talk like that. But you don't know that, do you? Paul says when you go to Jesus, when you go to God, go to him with thanksgiving. What do your prayers sound like? If you pray, I mean, you, you got to start there, right? So Paul is writing to a group who's automatically assuming that they are communicating to God. How much communicating do we do in our relationship? If you're here this morning as a Christ follower... How much communication do we spend with God? And is it always like, okay, uh, I, I'm in a big world of hurt right now, so I'm coming back to you, good buddy. All right, uh, check, check, my check one. God, are you there? Uh, maybe, I don't know what his handle is for you, but uh, uh, Jesus, Lord, Father, Yahweh, <laughs> hello, right? And so God, now I, I'm going to, and he goes, man, okay, yeah, go ahead, bring it, bring it, bring it. You see, if, if God loved the way that we loved we would be like, whatever, go figure it out. You're going to be in this spot again a year from now, wouldn't we? But that's not the love of your heavenly father. That's not the love of Jesus. He wants a relationship with you. He is patient with you. He is loving towards you. He is not waiting to condemn you. He is not trying to hurt you. He is not trying to kill you. He is not doing these things. But in our minds, we develop a God that we see be based on the love that we've experienced. And sometimes it's not accurate. You can always approach the throne. The book of Hebrews talks about. You can always go to your heavenly father. You can cast your cares, you can place your anxiety on him so that you do not have to carry that. And then he continues on in verse 7. He says this, and the peace of God. How many of you like to have the peace of God in your life? Any of you? <clears throat> okay, good. How many of y'all like to have the peace of God in your life out there? 
Of course we would. Of course we want the peace of God in our life. Now listen, if we're watching Sunday night football and one of your buddies stands up in the middle of the game like, hey man, would you like to have the peace of God in your life? You're like, well, this is so weird. But it's okay. We can talk about it at church, right? The peace of God is something that only he can give. And listen to what Paul says. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will, watch, guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's interesting, if you will begin to look for these spaces that you see in the New Testament, where it talks about your thoughts, where it talks about your mind, where it talks about being renewed by changing, growing, it is amazing that how much of it is mental. It's amazing of the transformation that has to take place in our life, not just a decision to follow Jesus, but it is a transformation of who you are becoming to look more like Jesus, and a lot of it starts in your head and in your heart, and then you move that direction, whether you, listen, feel it or not. You see, a lot of times our faith is solely based upon feelings, right? Hey, guys, man, was that a great experience this morning at church? I didn't really feel anything. (laughs) Well, we failed. We wanted to get your feelers. No. No. What we want to do is provide the truth, whether it be through a song and a sick drum fill, uh, followed up by that bass lip. I mean, that is amazing, isn't it? For me, music does get me in my feels. I'm like, ooh, ooh, it's going to be a good one today, right? Woo, thank you, Lord. But that's not what it's about. It's about gathering, and it's about being challenged. It's about hearing about Jesus, growing in your faith, maturing in your faith. And maybe for some of you, beginning that relationship with him. You know why you can cast your cares and cast your anxieties on him? Because he cares for you. Not, listen, not the you you're becoming, the you you are right now. You see, that, that, that's a big deal. Not the you that you're trying to become, but the you as you are right now. And he loves you so much, that he does not want you to stay there. He doesn't want you to continue to be the same person, no matter where you may be, no matter how good things may be going, no matter how bad things are going. He does not want you to stay in that spot. Verse 8 says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, and whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Isn't that awesome? Think about these things. Then he goes on in verse 9 and says this. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. Now, we're going to bring a mic out into the crowd. And we're going to ask if you can say the same thing. Hey, whatever you've seen me do this week, you guys need to do that. Because that's more like Jesus. And some of you be like, I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can come up with something real quick. Um, Monday? No. No. <laughs> Tuesday? <laughs> Definitely not. Wednesday? Uh, no, oh, I got, got, no, not Thursday. Okay. And and for Paul to say this, hey, listen, the things you've seen me do, the things you've heard me say, I want you to put those things into action. Sometimes Christ followers go to church, sing the songs, hear the message, like, whoo, that was a good one. And nothing ever changes. And then we begin to think, what is faith? What is it really? Is it changing me? Do I look more like Jesus? Do I act more like Jesus? As you grow, things should begin to look more like Christ. Uh, in, in the book uh, that Craig Rochelle uh, wrote, Winning the War on Your Mind, he says this, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. i say it again, so maybe you can write it down or text it or tweet it or whatever if you do, hashtag Groeschel. There it is. He says this, your life is always moving in the direction of, of your strongest thoughts. Don't raise your hand. But for some of you, your strongest thoughts are so negative. For some of you, your strongest thoughts are nothing to do with Christ. For some of you, your strongest thoughts are leading you further away to Jesus than they are to lead you even back to him. So we have to learn, what does this mean for my mind? How can I begin to think differently? 
And I think the best place to do that is by the people that you surround yourselves with. You know, there's all kinds of people who love to give information. They love to give advice. And some of it is not worth a, a dime or a nickel. I mean, it, it, the advice that some give, and they're like, you got to be kidding me. Like, did you get that off of a fortune cookie? Or is that even real, right? Like, th- th- and sometimes you just need to hear a hard truth, don't you? Because you know the space you're in. You know what's happening in your life. And you know it's not where God wants you to be. But to hear the hard truth, sometimes we push back so fast when we resist it so much that nothing ever changes. And we get, act, okay, well, this is good. This is just where I am. Not so. There are hard truths that need to be said, and you need to feel them for all of us. There are times in my leadership that I fail. There are times in the decisions that I didn't get right. There are times that I need people to look me eyeball to eyeball and say, Chad, here's where you are, man. And it's true for you, too. You need to have people who can push you back in the direction of pursuing Jesus. Romans chapter 2 verse or Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Watch what watch what Paul says. He says this, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see this this renewing of your mind thing, it, it's a continuation. It's not just a one-time event, it's over, and now I'll never have a bad thought, I'll never go this direction, I'll never sin again, I'll never make this bad. Yes, you will. But when you can have a continuation of this process, renewing your mind, how does that happen? Change the things that you allow to influence you. Change the people that you allow to speak into your life. Change your habits that are not God-honoring. Begin to spend time in the Word reading the word not so that you can say i read through the bible in a year did it change you i don't really know but i did it (laughs) who cares if there's no life change in it what are we doing it for if there's nothing that you can take from it and hear me on this it may be a month later it may be two months later that all of a sudden you go oh man i remember that romans 12 thing that pastor chad was talking about this is it And then Paul continues on, Romans 12, he says this, then once you begin to renew your mind, once you begin to to practice things and see things differently, this is what what you'll be able to do. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. You know what I have found to be one of the most scariest questions with people when I sit down and ask them and have a conversation? I'll ask this, hey, what do you believe God's will is in your life? They go, oh gosh, I don't know. And I'm like, whoa, calm down, you all right? (laughs) Are you choking? Like, what, hey, what do you believe God's will is in your life? Like, bro, I don't know. I'm just trying to survive. Really? I mean, that's not, that's not living. That's existing. Like, God doesn't call you just to exist. God wants you to live in his will. Did you know that for every individual, God has created something for you to do? Someone for you to be. And it's different for all of us. God's will for your life is not the same for God's will in my life. You know what his ultimate goal is? Is that you would love him and that you would follow him and that you would call him Lord and Savior. And then from that, you know what begins to happen? You learn what he wants for you. So many times as a Christ follower, or maybe you're sitting there and you're not a Christ follower, and all you've ever heard is what God wants from you. There may be things that happen like that, absolutely. There's things you're going to have to do as God continues to grow and mature in your faith. But you need to understand there is so much that God has for you. The way that he loves you, the way that he wants to lead you, what he has for you. Nothing that you have done, nothing that you have done can prevent you from receiving the love of God. Nothing that you have done can prevent you from receiving the love of God. In the moment, right now, where you are, God loves you. And he says this, this is what I need you to do. I need you to take all your anxiety. I need you to take your fear. I need you to take your worry. Because it is heavy. And I need you to bring it over here. I need you to cast it on me. God says, give it to me. 
You were never created to shoulder that. It is a burden that is not necessary for you to hang on to. It is a trap that you are caught in. It is a snare that will not let you go. It is a moment that happened, but it does not define you. Quit hanging on to that past moment. Quit allowing Satan to prevent you from following me well. You may be a Christ follower, but we are not moving with each other. We are not in step with each other. There are things that, yes, you have done wrong. There are things, yes, you have messed up, and you did sin. Cast it on me. And some do. But then when God doesn't do what we think he should do in the amount of time that we allowed, we go back and pick it right up. It's okay, I'll take it, I'll do it. And he says, no, it's not yours. Get rid of it, cast it, remove it, bring it to me. And here's why, because I care for you. Isn't that awesome to know that God cares for you? God cares for you. You say, yeah, but man, you don't, you don't know my story. <laughs> I hear your story and I'll raise it. Paul, who went to kill Christians and to stamp out the teachings of Jesus, to eliminate this from moving forward, began to follow Jesus and fell in love with Jesus and changed the world and it was all because of Jesus not because of Paul Paul's a great dude Paul, his, his name's in the Bible several times it's awesome but Paul would never say it's about me, it's about me Paul would say no, no, no it's always been about Jesus and it needs to continue to be about him and Paul would say this you know what Retri if you're in a bad spot here's what you need to know cast your fears Cast your anxiety, cast your worries on him, him being God. And here's why you can do that. Because he actually cares for you. Because he actually loves you. I want everybody to bow your head and close your eyes. I want to give you an opportunity to respond back. I have no idea where you may be with faith. Maybe you're kind of outside looking in and maybe just checking it out. And I just want to say thank you so much for coming and being a part of a gathering that reflects church and is church. And, and, and I know going to a new space can be weird at times and you're not really sure what to expect, but I hope and I pray that through the singing, through the speaking, that God is able to begin to maybe stir something up within you, that God may be able to draw something out and God may be able to begin to do something within you, for you. And so this morning, if you're here, and you're not a Christ follower. And I'm not talking about someone who knows about Jesus. I'm talking about someone who has given Jesus their life. You follow him. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christ follower, I'd love to give you the opportunity to begin a relationship with him. You say, yeah, but man, I'm really at a, a bad spot. Man, I've messed up so much. I, even yesterday, I mean, I'm just a wreck. Things are not good for me and I I just I just can't man because of where I am who I am what has happened I'm not sure what's supposed to go on I'm not sure how to even move from this space and I would say this you need to begin by asking Jesus to forgive you of your sin to become your Lord your Savior and then you begin to walk with him today so this morning if that's you and you want to do that I would invite you to say this prayer after me and understand it's not the prayer that makes you right before holy god you can say this prayer a thousand times but until you begin a relationship that's the thing and so the way that we know to do that is to confess with our mouth that jesus christ is lord and we believe in our heart that he did die in my space in your space for all of our sin so if you want to begin that then say something like this say it out loud say it in your head but say something like this, Dear Jesus, come into my life. I need you. Forgive me of all of my sin. Help me to follow you from this day forward. It's in Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed, no one looking around real quick. If you said that prayer this morning and you've asked Jesus Christ to become your Lord and your Savior, would you do me a favor? Would you just lift your hand up real quick and say, hey, you know what? This morning I've prayed and I've asked Jesus to come into my life. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Say, hey, you man, this morning I'm now following Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? Maybe this morning you're here and you are a Christ follower and you know, you know that you're not where God's wanting you to be. You know that in this season of your life, anxiety is ruling, you are hurt, you're crushed. There's external things taking place and you are not where you want to be and you know you're not where God wants you to be. If that's you this morning, would you just lift your hands so I can be praying for you? Amen, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, amen, thank you. Thank you. You can put it down. Thank you. You can put it down. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, thank you again for being a God who is powerful and mighty and drawing men and women to yourself. Lord, thank you for an opportunity to be able to speak your truth, Father, that you would do a work, God, and we would see people move from death to life. Lord, and you would continue to convict and lead your children in ways that we know that we are not where you want us to be. God, give us discernment, Lord. Help us to know so that we may be obedient to what you want. Not to just know things, but to do these things. Father, I pray for the three or four individuals, God, that raised their hand and said, hey, you know what, this morning, I am now following Jesus. God, that this would be a moment that changes their life. And you began to be their Lord, and you began to be their Savior, and they follow you. But for the others of us that raise our hand and say, hey, are there just some things? Lord, you know what each situation is. Father, we ask that you would wrap your arms around each circumstance and help us to follow you. Help us to allow you to lead. Lord, we want to be obedient. Lord, we want to be pleasing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. We just wanted to give a huge thank you to those of you that already partner with us through giving. And we've got multiple resources for you to utilize from to do that. You can give online, you can text the number 84321, or you can download our Church Center app. Again, thank you so much for listening today, and we'll see you next time.